Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, last night Apple released the GM for iPadOS 13.4 and uh, it's got quite a few new features but the main one is the iPad now supports trackpads. Um, it coincides with the launch of the new 4th generation iPad Pro and the new keyboard case that has a trackpad built in but you can pair existing trackpads like the Magic Trackpad or Magic Trackpad 2 and try out the gestures now. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I've got a Magic Trackpad 2 which I use on my Hackintosh and I'm going to pair it to my iPad and see how the gestures go. So if we have a look quick flick through the change log, you can see here there's a new cursor design so it's kind of like a circle which you'll see. Um, it adds support for the new Magic Keyboard etc and the trackpad like I said and multi-touch gestures. So yeah, let's give it a go. So here we go, I've updated and you can see my Bluetooth settings now that I've got my Magic Keyboard and my Magic Trackpad both paired now with my iPad. You can see the cursor now, sort of that little circle thing. So it's not like a traditional mouse like you'd see on a PC, um, but it's more in line with like a, I guess like a very, very small finger. Because most of the iPad isn't designed for a mouse, it's designed for a finger. So having a cursor that's like a finger is going to make it easier to use. I'll just show you my setup quickly. So that's the iPad there in its case. Chuck that microfiber out of the way. Um, the Magic Keyboard there is paired to it. Um, and there's the Magic Trackpad. So you can see as soon as you put your hand back on the trackpad, the cursor comes up. And you can scroll with two fingers like you would on a Mac. Um, you can click on all your items like you normally would. Um, literally it works just as if you were touching the screen but the key is in this kind of dock setup you don't have to keep lifting your hand up to touch the screen um, so it makes it for a much better experience in a docked mode definitely so here in the accessibility settings you can tweak it a bit so if I just go down to pointer control um, you can see that you can choose how long it takes for the pointer to hide um, you can add a color to the end of the circle um, <clears throat> so that just makes it easier to see if you need to um, you can also change the pointer size, so that's more of an accessibility thing. Um, you can put these pointer animations on, so it will change shape depending on what you hover over. Um, and then you can also turn off this uh, trackpad inertia. Um, so you can see now when that's off, it's much more precise, the movements. Um, but when it's on, it sort of flicks about and slides about. So I'm definitely going to keep it off. I'd probably recommend that everyone does that. So I'm just going to go to the home screen now. So you can see as I'm flicking between the icons that it changes shape to the icon size so you know which one you're hovered over and you can click on it to open it quite easily. Um, so I'll just open BBC News. Um, yeah, there's not that much to say for that. Um, but you can see I just did a gesture by moving my hand back to the iPad. Um, but you can actually do the gestures on the trackpad. So the two finger gesture for scrolling between, sort of scrolling up and down also works side by side on the home screen. So you can swipe, swipe between your home screen panes quite easily. Um, so that's good. If you click up in the top right hand corner, you get the control center. And if you click in the left hand corner, you get your notifications. Um, so that's good. Um, so three fingers swiping up goes back to your home screen. Um, so that's a pretty handy gesture. And then if you do three fingers but hold it, then it gets to your multitasking menu. And you can swipe away apps like you normally would with two fingers. Um, so let's open another app. So if you bring the cursor down, you can get to the dock. And you can open up your other app straight from there. Um, so BBC News doesn't support split screen, but I can show you the slide over app. So I've just dragged BBC Sport over, and that's now my slide over app. And I can move it side by side pretty easily because it's still it's still more precise than a finger, so it's pretty easy to use. So the three finger up gesture here works to get into your slide over multitasking menu. Um, so then yeah, just go back to the home screen. Uh, so open Edge. So I know this app does split by screen. I know this app does split screen, so that'd be good. Um, so there you go. You can quite easily get your multiple windows open. And you can see the cursor sort of sticks to the middle element, which is nice. So it's quite easy to grab and move and resize the windows as you want. Um, so again, I mean, this is all pretty basic stuff if you're on a Mac, but to, have, to be able to do it on an iPad with your trackpad is pretty nice. So if I open up, um, let's see, BBC News here, I can show you another gesture. So if you do three fingers swipe to the left and right, you can flick between your recent apps. Um, and you can keep going, like uh, it's the same as if you're using the gesture bar. Uh, I've just only got two windows open at the moment, obviously. Um, 
and you can also do that in the uh, slide over menu as well um, so let me just get one of those open so I'll bring Safari down into the slide overview and then I'll get another Safari window going there so there's two Safari windows there um, you can see a flick in between them um, let me open some web pages on them actually to make it easier to see so that's Amazon on one, eBay on the other and then you can see the free finger gesture is just swiping between them um, and then you can have Edge on the right hand side as well and yeah you just got basically four windows very ac easily accessible without having to touch the screen um, so again this is, is really good for having being in a dock setup um, and even if you're commuting so, or and you've got your iPad set up on a tray having the trackpad maybe on the new keyboard would be pretty good because you wouldn't have to keep reaching up um, and it might be a bit more of a comfortable commuting experience um, but yeah I'd have to see if I ever get that to try it out so another thing this is good for would be in a sort of document control so I'll open Google Docs uh, I'll just type some random stuff so now going back to the trackpad um, so you can't sort of drag and hold but you can double tap so when you double tap it starts to highlight a word and then you can grab either end of the highlighted text and just drag across um, and again you see the circles to highlight text on the iPad are pretty small um, so using a trackpad rather than your finger it does make it a lot more precise um, and it's a lot easier than to you know cut text copy and paste it etc um, and then you just double click if you want to put it in uh, so double click and then click paste um, maybe they could add I suppose they'd be pushing it to add a right click but yeah, if you click and hold as well you can get up the magnifier so you can get right to where you want to be um, so yeah while it's not as precise as a mouse uh, the mouse sort of cursor the circle cursor Apple have made it work quite well um, so another area it can work well is in games um, so Football Manager I've used it in a few videos before you probably noticed uh, it's one of my favorite games um, and it's designed for a PC or Mac um, so the interface is pretty similar on the iPad version which is good but it means it's harder to use with your finger um, it still looks like it's best for a mouse um, so I'm interested to see how that how well that will work with the new sort of circle circle cursor um, so yeah, so let's just get that loaded. Um, I'm a Man United fan. I've just taken on Arsenal as a challenge. Um, but yeah, already you can see it makes it a lot easier to use Football Manager. Um, and I'd imagine there's probably quite a few games like this where you can actually use very precise inputs um, to change like the look and feel of the game and uh, just get a bit more control. Um, so like this sort of column resizing that I'm doing now probably wouldn't have been able to do that with the f with uh, just my finger. Um, so again, that's pretty nice. Um, you could again, you could probably do a lot of this stuff with the Apple Pencil, uh, not the gestures, but like you know the precise input. Um, but you know, being able to do it with the trackpad is pretty nice because you can have that integrated into the keyboard as Apple are going to do. Um, so yeah, you can just see it bouncing around and sticking there. So I'm loading up uh, numbers now, so you can see it in the spreadsheet. There's not a massive amount to show here, but you know. Um, Spreadsheets are one of those things that is easier to do when you've got precise input. Um, so, you know, it's not revolutionary per se, but it at least brings the iPad on par with um, traditional Macs and Macs and PCs. So, um, you know, some might say this is how it should have been from the start, but in some ways, it's kind of good that Apple have left it and developed it properly because um, it's not they haven't just stuck a mouse on there. They thought about it and it's so this way that little circle will mean that if you don't have a mouse you can still use the iPad as you would nothing's going to change for you there um, and developers won't just uh, make interfaces that are um, sort of based for the trackpad only um, things will work both with the trackpad and just with your finger like normal um, so that's pretty nice because the easy if they just went the route of uh, just sticking a normal mouse cursor you know the easy thing to do then is port apps over that have the exact same UI as the Mac or PC but that would kind of ruin the iPad in a way um, whereas this is a sort of a different way of using a computer uh, I know Apple's they like Apple like to play with the definition of computer with the, when it comes to the iPad but it is a computer really um, 
but yeah um it's nice to now have the added flexibility of using a trackpad or you can do the kind of, a lot of this stuff with a mouse as well um so i'm pretty happy with it um and mainly in particular for using it in a docked mode because it just makes it a lot easier to use for a long time in a dock um and potentially if they add better multi uh, better external display support you could have it where you work using you know use your finger and whatnot on the go and then you come back dock your ipad into a dock use your external display and use your mouse and mouse and keyboard or trackpad and keyboard like you normally would um which i think would go a long way to unlocking the real power of the ipad um so yeah uh, if you enjoyed the video let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions about it let me know i'll try and uh i'll try and i'll try and answer them um, but yeah see you guys in the next one